In section 6.2, we're going to be talking about how the constants change position over time. Lots of notes here, so I'm going to do very little talking, but I am going to just tell you that anything that's highlighted probably should be written down into your notes. But the idea of this, uh, the constants constantly moving over time, uh, was proposed by this this guy named Alfred, and it says Wagoner, but it's it's a Wagoner with a V. He came up with this idea that the continents have drifted over time. He had three pieces of information that uh, let him know, or let us know that uh, they did move. Uh, fossils. Now, if you look at, uh, he found fossils in South America and Africa that are the same, uh, same animals, same time frame, same age. Um, and if you actually look at South America and, and Africa, they look like they can put together, you could put them together. And I'll show you that in class today. Um, also, climates. I found that Greenland actually had tropical plants uh, on, the, on Greenland itself. So at one point, it must have been in a tropical environment. And then the last evidence was his best evidence um, was the geology. He found rocks in, uh, in Brazil and Africa, uh, two different places, same exact kind, same exact age, same exact makeup. And remember when we talked about rocks uh, in the past, uh, if they had the same chemical makeup, they had the same everything, they, they formed at the same time. Now, his idea was that, you know, that's they've been moved, uh, moving all over forever. Um, now, he wasn't really accepted by most scientists. That idea wasn't accepted by most scientists. But um, he did have the idea they called this large supercontinent when all the, the continents were together. Uh, it was called Pangea, and it's, it's right down here. Uh, it's pronounced Pan, G, and A. Uh. Um, here's kind of what it would look like uh, back 725 million years ago. We were all just one large uh, mass. You can see uh, South America and Africa, Antarctica. This actually, when we look at it later on, is India and Australia, North America. But as time goes by, you can kind of see that there's a separation here and things start to separate. And this is kind of where we are at right now. In time, we probably will uh, um, keep on moving. Now, here's a little song that will... Uh, explain Wegener's uh, theory, uh, put to a tune uh, that maybe you may know, but uh, listen to the words, look at the script. That's the main thing that you want to get out of here. Rising, rising, rising. 
Silicon, oxygen, iron, and magnesium. The surface to the center, all the layers differ. Composition, temperature, and their pressure. saw in that uh, song uh, just talking about Pangea moving apart uh, some of that stuff that we that were in that was in that uh, song we'll talk about uh, in 6.3 but a lot of the stuff was also is also going to be on this page right here uh, basically the theory of plate tectonics just explains how those plates move over time um, we have things called mid-ocean ridges that's basically the evidence that we see in the seafloor. Um, as the, the plates are moving apart, more magma comes up through the ground and it makes more uh, makes new land in the middle of the ocean. Right down the Atlantic Ocean, there's a huge uh, mid-ocean ridge that runs almost from the North Pole to South Pole. Um, but along that, where the floor is spreading apart, this molten rock comes up, um, it cools, it forms the new new oceanic crust um, and then the old stuff moves farther and farther away from the new material and uh, um, the evidence that we see about that is that you know, they look at we can age uh, continental crust and that shows to be about four billion years old uh, the oldest ocean floors only about 160 to 180 million years old uh, that I mean when I say only 160 to 180 million uh, I mean you know, that's pretty young compared to four billion uh, but the farther you are away from these ridges the older the rock is um, and it's constantly moving like a conveyor belt um, so uh, this right here I'm gonna I'm not gonna say much about it but this is gonna be a test question so here's the essay here's the answer make sure you copy it down into your notes um, it's basically just showing what or explaining what the plate tectonics theory is um, but there are also on the other side of the earth away from the uh, um, spreading zones uh, are trenches well in trenches the old crust falls into and gets destroyed gets pushed down into the earth and melted and turned back into ma uh, magma in the mantle and then comes back up later on um, this convection current motion um, is basically things that get heated they rise um, and when they cool, they sink. Uh, so that's kind of what happens to the rocks too. And I'm going to show you a little little animation in about a minute or so that will explain that. Now, when you put all of this together, when you put the theory together, uh, basically it states that the theory of plate tectonics states that the Earth's lithosphere, which is the top layer of the hard, uh, solid rock part, is made up of huge plates that float over the top of the surface of the Earth, floats on the mantle. Um, plates move apart, they push together, and they scrape past each other. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next section, is what happens when that happens. Uh, earthquakes, volcanoes, mountains sh show up in these tectonic plate areas where they meet and when they pull apart and when they scrape past each other. But uh, here's that animation. 
Well, that animation I couldn't figure out. Uh, I was having issues, technical issues, trying to get it on. But looking at this picture right here, basically what a convection current does is when heated rock uh, gets hot, hot enough, it will rise. As it cools, it'll sink. Uh, when it sinks, it'll heat up again, and then it'll rise again, and it'll continue on forever. So if you look right here in your mantle, uh, the plate sitting on the top, on the crust, well, here is that uh, spreading zone right here, mid-ocean ridge. As the inner and outer core heat the mantle, it rises. And if you just follow the cursor, um, as it rises, it comes to the surface. Um, and as it gets closer and closer to the surface, it begins to cool. Then as it cools, it pushes this plate. And as it cools, it sinks. And as it sinks, it, or as it sinks, it cools down, or actually it doesn't cool down, sorry. It sinks closer and closer to the heat source. It gets heated up again, and then it rises. And as it rises, it hits the crust again and spreads it out just a little bit more. But as it goes up, it cools, and as it cools, it sinks. And as it sinks, it gets closer to the heat source, and then it gets heated up again, and then it rises. And it kind of just continues on in this current, this convection current. And it happens all over throughout the mantle. And with all of that movement causes these plates to move, uh, we're going to talk about in the next section um, what happens when these plates move and when they run into each other. So um, again, hopefully you got a lot out of this. Um, copy, make sure anything that was highlighted, uh, get that into your notes. And that uh, theory of plate tectonics uh, essay question, get that written down because that is going to be your essay question for the test. Um, so, um, and uh, why don't I just throw this in there. Uh, the first three people that come up to me and um, explain, um, give me two pieces of Wagner's evidence to show that uh, Pangaea was, is moving and has been moving. Uh, the first three people in this class period that come up to me and tell me at least two of the three things I'll give uh, three B stamps for. So uh, good luck. I hope to be talking to you and signing your B card.